Numerical Computation, Chapter 4, Additional Video Number 3. This video can be viewed after you have seen Additional Video Number 2. So far, all the methods we presented here are for integrations in one space dimension. And most of these methods can be extended to multidimensional problems based on various polynomial approximations to the integrand function. However, the complexity of those algorithms would increase exponentially as one increased the number of dimensions. Here, we introduce a totally different approach, using random numbers instead. The method computes an approximation to a definite integral by randomly choosing points at which the integral is evaluated. And this is called Monte Carlo integration. It belongs to a class of non-deterministic approach. One will see that such a method is particularly useful for multidimensional integrals. So to set the problem, a fixed idea, we consider a function fx, which is defined in some space Rm. M could be 1, 2, or 3, or any dimension. And we wish to compute the integral of fx over this region omega, where, where omega is a region of dimension m. To compute the volume of this region omega, one can integrate the function, identity function 1, over this region, and that would give one the volume v. Now we consider n random sampling points lies in omega, and we label them as x1, x2 to xm. m could be a rather large number. And we aim at computing the average of the function f. So if only using those points and sampling points from x1 to f, xn, what we have is the so-called observed average, that is evaluating the function f at those sampling points, and then you get n values, and you add them up and divide it by the total number of points. And then the integral i we actually know if we divide the integral i by the volume v, we will get the average of f over the area omega. So this gives us an approximation of computing the i. We call it i n, n is the number of sampling points. And this can be approximated by the volume multiplied by the observed average of the function. And putting this together, put the f bar expression in here, and then we get this simple expression. And this we are hoping it to be a good approximation to i. We utilize the law of large numbers. It says that as you take many, many more and more points to compute the average, in the end, your observed average would converge to the exact average for n very large. Some discussion of the algorithm, some pros and cons. So one advantage of the algorithm is that it does not depend on the number of the dimension. So this is a significant advantage over most deterministic methods whose complexity grows exponentially on the number of dimensions. And secondly, the convergence rate is independent 
of the regularity of the function f being integrated. Well, that fact is apparent since the method does not depend on any polynomial approximations of f. So consequently, Monte Carlo method does not yield more accurate result even for smoother functions of f, while the deterministic methods would do it. Well, all that advantages actually comes at a price, that is, the convergence estimate for the method is rather poor. Let's perform a simple convergence analysis. We denote the average squared function by Sn, which is the square of f and sum over and take the average. And the n here denotes the number of sampling points. And then we have the following estimate for the integral. The integral is approximated by the approximation to the integration by Monte Carlo method plus minus this expression here. V is the volume and then um, the average squared function subtracted by the, the square of your Monte Carlo method and the difference is divided by the total number of sampling points. And then one can show that this arrow term here is actually of order n to the negative one half. So this gives one an arrow of order n to the negative one half, which means uh, the rate of convergence is about half. That is a rather poor convergence rate result. To improve the error estimate, a lot of study have been done and uh, one can apply adaptive sampling techniques to choose the points in a smart way so the convergence is enhanced. And such a discussion is, again, outside the scope of this video. If you are interested, I encourage you to do further readings. However, we can do the following. We can run some numerical simulations to observe how the method behaves and to observe the rate of convergence. Let's consider the integral of a simple um, polynomial, 3x squared, from 0 to 1. Since it's a polynomial, we know that the exact value should be 1. So here is a short MATLAB code that um, performs the Monte Carlo simulation. Let's take a look at it. So we set m equal 5, that's in different numbers of tries we apply the method with. And n now becomes a vector which contains the number of points that we will unsample. From this expression we see that and when this vector is 1, we have 200 points. And then and the second component of um, this vector will be twice of that. So we'll have a sequence of 200, and then 400, and 800, and then 1600, and so on. And this vector has length 15. And then we set this to be a zero, that's where we store the um, in numerical integrations. We now go through a for loop, going through all the numbers we stored in n, that's the number of sampling points, and then for each of these we generate a random x location so there'll be, uh, when k is 1 and 1 is 200, then we'll have 200 points in this x. And then we simply compute the average, the mean value of uh, and 3 times x square of that vector and give that to ik. So we see that's actually the, the key step. This is the Monte Carlo. It's very simple. You just compute the mean of that. Okay. 
and then we store the arrow in air, which is the absolute arrow, how different your solution is to the exact solution. And then we plot the arrow against total number of sampling points in a log-log plot. And this arrow is plotted together with uh, a square root function. So in a log-log plot, this would give us a straight line with the slope um, negative half here, actually, because we put negative 1 here. The code now um, generates the following plot for us. And we see that the, the blue lines are the arrow of Monte Carlo methods. And then here is the number of uh, inter and sampling points, n. And uh, the red dotted straight line representing the line of uh, a convergence rate half. And we see that the Monte Carlo method, this point, they more or less like is around this line of a half, although there's some oscillations because there's randomness here. You choose your sampling points in a random way. So that's a numeric confirmation of a convergence rate of half. And next, we consider an integration in two-dimensional space. Let's see. We want to integrate this function f here over an omega f depends on x and y and f is a function that takes value 1 if x squared plus y squared is less than 1 and 0 otherwise. So you see in a unit circle with the radius 1 around the origin f takes value 1 and outside it's 0. And the omega here we compute is a square, um, x range from negative 1 to 1, and so does y. So it's a square, each side is 2 and centered at the origin. So it's not hard to see that this integration in the end just gives you the area of a unit circle. So the i value, the exact value for this i shall be pi. So we can view this example as a way to compute an approximate value for pi. Now, also, we would like to call for the attention that the integral f is actually a discontinuous function. It has a jump um, along the lines of radius 1. For such a discontinuous function, most deterministic method would give very poor performance and a very low convergence rate. But for Monte Carlo method, it actually doesn't care. So here is a short MATLAB code. So here we define a function called Monte Carlo integration. And we're sending n, n will be the number of sampling points and the code returns you an approximation i. So we generate a random number in um, two is a dimension, so this will actually be a vector. And then we compute the radius of this vector, so x1 squared plus x2 squared. And then we define a function f set it to be 0 everywhere first, and then we find the index of um, r, radius of all my points, x, find all of those that are actually less than 1, that lies inside the unit circle, and collect the index of all of them. And then we set the function f at those index to be 1. So I, I realize this might be a little bit advanced coding. It utilizes the MATLAB 
um, function find in a very efficient way. So if you can't understand what this is doing, then I encourage you to um, go to help find in MATLAB and figure out what it offers you, especially in the case when it returns an index for you. Okay. So now I set the f at those index point to be 1, that is, for all the x that lies in the unit and circle, the corresponding f will be 1, and all the others it will be 0. And then I simply compute the mean value of f, and then multiply it by 4. And this is, 4 is the volume of my integration area, which is a square with side lengths so this function takes an integer n and then returns an approximation. And then we can generate a sequence of n and then we will have a sequence of approximations. We can plot them in the graph. I can plot the arrow in the log log form just as the first example and we can observe the convergence. So here is the plot. So we actually did many, many points of different n. We send it in, and then this dotted line is again the arrow, um, uh, is the line with the slope um, negative half. And we see that the arrow of the Monte Carlo method more or less oscillate around this line in a pretty good way. So one can say the rate of convergence is half. It's not such a great rate of convergence, but think what problem we had. We had a integration in 2D where the function we integrate is discontinuous. If you use a deterministic version, it's a lot of hassle and you don't get any good convergence rate anyway. And with Monte Carlo method, it's so easy, and uh, it handles this without even noticing the underlying difficulty. So we should really be appreciative of the easy handling of the 2D integration by the Monte Carlo method. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and hope you enjoyed it.